Hi guys, welcome to Metabolic Lectures. We're gonna do another series of lectures here. Uh, this will be the introductory lecture into neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, and neuropathology. Now here's the circle of Willis, here's the midbrain, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the blood supply into the brain, eventually transition that into which cranial nerves are involved, and then talk about the specific stroke syndromes and why uh, they happen. So one thing you guys are gonna need to remember is that First of all, we have to get things anatomically correct. If you're anatom anatomically not making the things in the right connection, it's gonna be so much harder to memorize for the board exams. It's just gonna be ridiculous. So first thing I want you guys to do, take a look at this picture. All right, what do you see? I know a lot of you see this as the circle of Willis. Everybody has it memorized. We know all the arteries. Here's the circle of Willis. All right, here is a picture kind of in anatomical proportion to um, where it should be and what we're talking about. We're looking at the midbrain pons medulla. This is the brain stem basically. And what the point of this image is, is we're supposed to overlap and try to put things together. Now, let's get started so we can understand what is going on exactly. So if we look at the, uh, the brain stem right here, right? The top portion right here is the midbrain. Here's the pons, here's the medulla, as we say, and here goes the spinal cord down here. Up here is the actual brain and the cortex and all that responsible for the higher functions. Now, to be able to put things together, one thing I've drawn out here is obviously the brain stem. Along with that, what we're gonna do is basically take, sorry, we're gonna take the this drawing, and I want you guys to keep in mind what's happening right now. We're gonna overlap this and when we superimpose, uh, there we go. When we superimpose this on top of the brain stem, one thing we look at is here's cranial nerve three. You guys remember cranial nerve three, ocular motor nerve? It comes from the middle of the midbrain. Here's cranial nerve four, trochlear nerve, cranial nerve five, cranial nerve six comes from the middle of the midbrain. Uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, as you guys can tell. Now, why is this anatomically correct? Number first thing you gotta remember is that um, there are four nerves. There are four cranial nerves that actually come out from the middle, from the midline of the brainstem or the spinal cord, the midline. And they're responsible for the mid middle sy syndromes that we always talk about, like the medial medullary syndrome versus the me lateral medullary syndrome. So if you can draw this anatomically correct, the four cranial nerves would be cranial nerve three, cranial nerve four, because it comes basically from the midline, cranial nerve six, and cranial nerve 12. Another rule we know about is the rule of 12s. If you look at the numbers three, four, six, and 12, they divide equally into the number 12, okay? So any cranial nerve that can divide into 12, we're gonna make a midline. The rest are lateral, okay? And now let's move on. Um, we're gonna move on into the blood supply of the brain. And what we wanna remember in this case is simply, here is the actual um, circle of Willis. Now, what's the function of the circle of Willis? We know what the function is. It supplies blood to the brain, right? Supplies blood to the brain via the internal carotid artery, which I didn't draw here, but if you were to uh, anatomically put it correct, it would be at the side here, supplying blood to each of these arteries. If we take this circle of Willis and try to superimpose it on top of this, we are gonna get something that is gonna help us a lot, okay? Well, I kind of covered my cranial nerve 12 there, but you guys get the picture. Bang. Now we have this picture. I want you guys to memorize this picture and keep in mind of one thing. When we look at this, the anterior communicating artery, the PCA artery, they are anatomically correct on where they're supplying. So, for example, well, I'm gonna use this picture to um, teach you guys an example to make sure that you guys understand that it actually works. So, let's take a look at this. Let's do, uh, here's ASA for example, correct? A anterior spinal artery. We're gonna take this, we're gonna put it to the side, we're gonna talk a little bit about it. Anterior spinal artery is involved in what? It's involved in medial medullary syndrome. So, first of all, this is the medulla, we know that. It's the medial side of the medulla, yes it is. So it's involved in medial medullary syndrome. Which artery? ASA. 
Which cranial nerve? Cranial nerve 12, that was under here. It was superimposed under here. We can't see it right now. But when we talk about cranial nerve 12, we know it's the hypoglossal nerve, right? And we know it's involved in what? Motor function of the tongue. So when you have hypoglossal nerve involvement, right? Because cranial nerve 12 is compressed or there's a lesion or there's a tumor or you have a stroke or whatever, you're basically going to get that tongue to be deviated towards the side of the lesion. Okay, so cranial nerve 12 is going to push the tongue towards the side of the lesion. Now, that's just one example of medial medullary syndrome. We're going to talk more about each one of these syndromes using this picture again and again. And we're going to talk about everything from Wallenberg syndrome, inferior pontine syndrome, and lateral inferior pontine syndrome, and Weber syndrome. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to like and subscribe. Keep this anatomical picture in mind every time you try to answer a stroke question, if it's asking about uh, the location. Uh, for those of you guys who are studying for step three, you're not going to have to know this too much. They're going to stick to the basics of ACA, uh, PCA, MCA, etc. You'll be able to bang it out a lot quicker, but step one and step two tends to go a little more detail when they talk about strokes in terms of the anatomy. And step three tends to talk about more about the management of the stroke itself. All right, have a nice day.